full self-driving version 12 is very important for Tesla. It, it needs to show that it's improving. It needs to show that it's making the leaps and bounds. Is it going to be the path towards, you know, robo taxi autonomy, or is it going to hit an edge, you know, hit its own local maximum and, you know, need to be rewritten or something like that right now, all the signs are pointing that it is looking like it can be that way. So we've got rebellion air. This is a, uh, Bradford Ferguson, and he took James Dama on a ride. And uh, they're exp James Dama, who's a well-known machine learning expert, uh, he's just incredibly following Tesla for many years, and he finally got to experience version 12 for himself. And let's watch a video, a small clip of his reaction. And um, he took Bradford to his own location where he lives and areas where version 11 will always fail. Let's take a look at this. So right here we need to go over the line. Very nice, look at that. Yeah. Waited for that other car, it slowed down. So actually, so V11 crosses the line in that situation, but it goes much farther across the line. Like okay. this 12 is a much more human. Humans will not cross the line more than they need to. So this is always an interesting situation. And that was really smoothly handled. 11 will get to that stop sign, see the truck. That guy's truck is always parked there. Um, and then get kind of confused because it's not sure if he's, it's not totally clear if it's stopped or parked because of the place that it's at. So it'll be kind of jerky a little while, then it'll decide it's parked, finish the turn. That was really nice pedestrian handling. There wasn't any hesitation there. So this, this is only one lane wide. This is a section of road where, you know, oh. you have to stop at one end or the other. That's cool. Okay, let's see how it handles this pedestrian. Oh, that was super nice. So this is a, people like walking up this road. It's really common to encounter pedestrians in that narrow section. Uh, and and 11, just stop. 11 will stop and wait for the pedestrian to clear the roadway uh -huh. before it'll proceed, which is kind of unnatural in the pedestrians. Yeah. Expect. So this is where you kind of get the splits. See, it, it didn't stop and wait uh -huh. to see. And it doesn't 11. always stop there. Oh, okay. Okay, so... So normally so James is saying that motorcycle. at these splits it would stop. Um, so we'll see how it does on the rest of the splits. So uh, uh, 11, when it sees that motorcycle, it pauses like to make sure, because it looks like it's about to pull out Cross into the road. So there's no, okay. the amount of hesitation is, it's almost completely gone. Mm -hmm. Like it's radically reduced. Mm -hmm. So this is a place where, where 11 stops to look to, as if it's an intersection. Mm -hmm. 12 doesn't. <laughs> this is a we're on the main through uh, yeah. the main area yeah. of this of these Y intersections. So it's just, just going up to the end of this cul-de-sac. And would it jitter too when it would stop or it just come to a full stop? Occasionally it'll jitter. I, I, this is like qualitatively different than 11 is on this road. Okay, so we're. Okay, so what it just did here is what 11 does at every single one of these, except 11 will stop longer. It'll come okay. to a complete stop. Complete stop. This only went down to seven miles an hour. Yeah. And so for 12, on, on that particular uh, Y, you can't actually see up the road. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense yeah, for 12 to slow down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we just watched James Dalma and his reaction to his experience with version 12. You can see in that just short two minute clip, there was at least six times that he kept saying that version 11 would have done this, version 12 did this, which is better. Before we talk about what we saw there, I just wanted to share with the, the group here exactly what he actually said. He said this, version 12 is going to be over 100 times reduction in interventions compared to version 11, 100 times, not just one magnitude 10x this is two magnitudes at 100x this is not an incremental upgrade it's a leap forward he actually has a much longer uh post which we will review but before that i want to show elon's reaction to that elon said thanks this is an accurate assessment training computers currently are limiting factor but that issue is being resolved fast so in his mind in elon what he's saying here is that version 12 neural net end-to-end -end, is the solution we just need high more training compute and that is going to be resolved soon and so it's looking like this is a big deal when jim james himself who's very very uh much more particular about how he analyzes progress much more than us regular people he thinks it's a hundred times reduction in interventions uh, what's your thought guys
Uh, it's tough to say. The, it, it's doing some really human stuff. Uh, there are other videos where we're seeing it find your parking spot for you and park. This is new territory. This doesn't, I mean, this feels like a whole additional nine or two in the March of Nines. And it is, uh, it, it, it's got to do those things. The trick with, you know, we, we've seen people say, well, if a computer can solve chess, if a computer can solve Go, those then this should be easy. But those rule games have rules, and driving is a game of exceptions. Um, your driver's test doesn't cover a lot of the things that we just watched V12 do, because a human just knows to, you know, be careful. Um, co if you were trying to make a car drive that route, just that one road with heuristics, where you put in infinite if-then clauses, that would be the entire stack just to cover one road. And then you take it anywhere else and all of a sudden it's got too many rules, too many exceptions. It's, it's, it creates problems, which is what we're seeing other manufacturers and even older versions of beta struggle with. So to me, this is very exciting. I don't know if that means that this is the destination, that this is going to finally be level four, level five everywhere. If you would still feel comfortable sending your car out and coming back with curb rash, if your, if your kids do that to your car, you can have a conversation with them. But I would be more understanding if someone in my family uh, got curb rash than if my car did it on its own. What do you think, Hans? Yeah, I I wanted to point out that James did say that version 12 is going to be a 100x reduction in interventions, not that it is today. And so he's looking at the way that this is built and he's seeing there's just a very qualitative difference in the types of things that FSD struggles with and the types of things that V11 struggled with. And, you know, as a person who is very intimately involved in building various software systems, and he's, he's done all sorts of programming in software 1.0 and software 2.0. And as someone who has really been, you know, deeply investigating the FSD stack since its early days, um, you know, if you go back and watch for anyone who doesn't really know who James Dalma is, you can go back and watch tons and tons of interviews that he's done with Dave Lee from Dave Lee on investing over numerous years. And he understands things, not only how they're done, but how they're built. And so that was one of the reasons that he was always able to bring such insights to the Tesla community about where FSD was at that point in time and where it was going, because he really was able to either through directly looking at the code, he could see how the system was architected and could share and kind of explain to us who don't really understand those things um, what that implied as far as what the functionality was going to be um, or explaining, you know, why there are these weird behaviors that people continue to complain about. Why do those weird behaviors exist in the system? And he could always get down to, okay, this is the architectural reason that this is a problem for this iteration of FSD. And so for him to be saying, hey, this is going to solve basically a ton of architectural challenges that were always going to be extremely difficult to solve in a software 1.0 heuristic way, um, I think is... a uh, a very large piece of signal for us because the, where a an individual user who's just driving around they're saying hey you know i've got fsd you know maybe for that individual driver it's a little bit better you know fewer disengagements than they had on v11 at this point in time or maybe it's about the same maybe it's even worse for them they're just thinking about it in terms of one single metric and that's you know how many disengagements did i have before versus how many disengagements do I have now? When James is making this prediction and he's having this conversation with Bradford as they're driving through this scenario, he's not just looking at disengagements today versus disengagements before. He's looking at how was this built before versus how is it built now? Why are the disengagements arising that are arising? How are they different? And where does that mean that this is going over the long term? Um, and so it's just great to see that from his 
level of depth, he's really projecting an incredible amount of progress over the really we should be talking about a medium term to short term that if they've come this far with just one year's worth of development on the FSD V12 stack a year from now, um, if we're twice the amount of time and we have 10 X the amount of compute to throw at the problem, we should really see incredible bounds forward from here as well. Um, and so it seems like just to reiterate a, a point that Elon has talked about, you know, that this is probably that a architecture that they've been searching for. And James seems to be of the opinion that yes, this is that a architecture that gets us a long way there. Does it get us all the way to robo taxis? You know, that's a hard question to answer. I would personally say that I doubt that. Um, I think this gets us to very valuable SaaS product that more people are going to want to pay more for pieces of functionality that FSDV12 provides to them than have been willing to pony up $200 subscriptions or twelve dollars to $15,000 upfront prices for software that was legitimately a beta software product that didn't really have all of the functionality that people would expect if they're really going to put down that type of money, unless they're just really enthusiastic early adopters and supporters of Tesla and the mission. Um, and I think that okay. we're beginning to exit out of that into an era where there's going to be a lot more usable, valuable software um, that Tesla can earn revenue from.